you know, to have Brooks remains and to um, be able to kind of move on without it having to open up again all the time. We keep hoping that we'll have that, that ending and, and it'll bring some peace, I think. The man who planned to marry Brooke may not be ready to face that ending. When they do find her, it'll be like admitting it actually happened, you know. And so, I guess a small part of me doesn't want her to be found just so I, I don't have to deal with it, I guess. But then, it'd just be so much better if we did, you know. I, I really hope that the Wilbergers find out what happened to Brooke. I've got four children of my own, uh, my own daughter. Um, this will be close to me for the rest of my life. In cases like this are life changing to everybody. And I, the people's lives who are really changed are Greg and Cammie Wilberger and Brooke's brothers and sisters. We haven't, we've had a lot of support, a lot of people, but there are those lonely moments when you are alone because people only understand to a degree. People talk a lot about moving on, but, you know, it's it's not really possible. You know, I can't even think about, like, continuing all the, all the dreams we had together, you know? And so, it's like just turning and having to go a different direction. Like, it's, they're not, not moving on. Acknowledging that she is gone, Brooke Wilberger's high school friends established a college scholarship fund in her memory. Brooke was a freshman at Brigham Young University, and her friends from there say they're also trying to keep her generous spirit alive. She was just very sincere and very friendly to everyone. Like She was always like a best friend to everyone, very caring, and really wanted to know more about that person. She really enjoyed life and lived life to the fullest. So in remembrance of her, if you just take every day, every moment, every second and cherish it, you can't go wrong with that. And that's, that's exactly how Brooke would want it. This is my home! Yay! You don't realize until somebody's taken away and out of your family how, how they fit in. The place and so then that, that's a big piece that, is, that misses now because she was so happy. And, and like even at school, she called us every Sunday night. And, Tell us what she done during the week. And, and then we'd call several times during the week, too, and just visit. <clears throat> we don't get those opportunities anymore, so. Every time we get together as a family, there's always just that underlying sadness. This just has such a bitter, just a, a really terrible, bitter feeling. My heart goes out to the Wilburgers. I know they didn't want to hear, you know, that... Brooke is no longer living, um, and just as we never want to hear that Mara is no longer living. Those who love missing co-ed Maura Murray remain in a limbo, where the pain is still laced with lingering expectations. I pray daily that Mara is living, and, and my, my, my logic tells me that she's not, but my heart won't, won't let me give up hope. Before this happened, she was that constant in my life that regardless of where I would go and what I would do, um, none of that seemed very important uh, if I could bank on her being there through it at all. Sometimes I'm mad. Other times I'm hopeful. And other times I'm just so, so immersed in, in trying to investigate uh, what, what could have happened. And the closer I get, when I stand right here, the same feelings come back. You know, the same frustration, the same what if. Where could she be? As of 2013, Mara Murray's disappearance remains an active missing persons case, and the police are still getting tips. Her father, Fred, says he thinks about Mara every day and vows to keep searching for her. 
Joel Patrick Courtney was convicted of rape and kidnapping in New Mexico. But it took five years from the time Brooke disappeared for her parents to finally get answers. As part of a plea bargain, Courtney admitted to the rape, kidnapping, and murder of Brooke Wilberger and led police to her remains in the woods outside town. He received life in prison without parole. Brooke's parents say they're grateful that justice... Where is the search now? Uh, how far have you looked now? As it turns out, there, there was no search. Certainly, if Mara had been a juvenile, there would have been different alerts. In this case, the initial conclusions at the scene was that um, Mara had probably left on her own free will. But a day and a half later, with still no sign of Mora, authorities investigated further. They brought out helicopters, ground crews to search the area, and dogs, but two things stood out. Number one, there weren't any footprints left in the snow. And number two, dogs lost their scent about 100 yards away from the scene. According to police, there were no signs of a struggle or any other evidence like that. The police told us there was no evidence of foul play, that she was running away from everybody. You know, she's starting over. She's starting a new life. And in their words, she's 21 and she has that right. Uh, I kept hearing, well, she's an adult and she can do anything she wants. And, and uh, I was the only one out there, walking up and down the street, uh, looking over snow banks, trying to find footprints, trying to si find some sign of her just putting you know boots on the ground and, and getting out and, uh, with several people driving all over the countryside and passing out flyers. Bill Roush joined the search for Mora. He got an emergency leave from the army to help find the woman he planned to marry. Wherever she was going, and I, and I don't know, and uh, to be honest, I don't even have really a best guess specifically, that was interrupted by her sliding off the side of the road. And at that moment, uh, circumstances changed. She's completely at the mercy of any type of person that drives by. And I'm afraid that somebody, some bad guy, came by and, and, and uh, harmed her, did something to her. For all of us that love Mara, life is like a nightmare. I feel like she's my own daughter. Um, you know, I can honestly, you know, say that um, I can't imagine loving anyone that's not my child any more than I love Mara. Three months later, as Mora's disappearance lingered without answers, her family saw reports of another missing young woman, this one in Oregon, Brooke Wilberger. The community rallied around and they were doing all these line searches, you know, something that Mara never had. And I remember thinking, well, thank God they're out there looking for this young woman. The two families from opposite sides of the country, but with a tragic common ground, comforted each other. And we talked about our faith in God and, you know, that we would not give up hope, you know, and that Brooke and Mara were in God's hands. When we come back, where was Mara Murray going that night? Was she planning to ever return? It was clear from a search of her room that she had packed her belongings. When 2020 continues. The searches for missing co-eds Brooke Wilberger and Mara Murray continue. The two families, though 3,000 miles apart, share the same hope that they will find their daughters and the same sense of shock. How could this have happened to the girls who had everything in the world to look forward